911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to another episode of Tactical Living by Leo Warriors. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. And I'm your co-host, Clinton Walton. In today's episode, we're going to talk about something that's quite uncomfortable for some people and quite empowering for others. And that is the second presidential executive order, which is enhancing public safety in the interior of the United States. So for today's episode, just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Clint and I try very diligently not to watch the news nowadays. Yeah. I think what happened was since the earthquake on the 4th of July and the 5th of July, we keep just popping on there to see if there's any kind of new updates on anything as it pertains to earthquakes because I'm deathly afraid of them. (laughs) And in doing that, We can't help but see so many protests that are happening. And we live close to the Los Angeles area. So it's big news in Southern California. And I wanted to take a step back because I understand how people are getting upset because of the way that the immigrants are being detained. I also do not believe that that is the way to go about it. They are literally being kept in cages that are far more condensed than even jail cells. Regardless, I do believe that they are committing crimes and they should be held in some kind of captivity that is very comparable to, you know, prison in the meantime until everything is sorted out. However, those types of conditions is not something that we would even hold our own prisoners in. So that's one thing. I completely understand that and I don't think that it's right. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's, I think the environment and the system's broken when it comes to the detention of illegal immigrants. It's, they're kept in subpar situations that, you know, adults nor children should be kept in. That needs to be reformed, definitely. In saying that, this is the first time that something like this has happened in our history, yeah, and it's actually, this has been going on for decades. It's just never been brought to light. Yeah. And so the reason I felt that it was so important to talk about this is because I feel that the media is really misconstruing the exact reason for this presidential order. It was actually put forth back in 2017. And it's so easy for us to just flip on the news and think what's going on on our screen is all that's happening But there's a reality behind the scenes. And so I have this executive order. It's the second one actually pulled up right now on my computer. And I just want to touch on some of these points to hopefully shed some awareness on the reality and the reasons why this executive order is so important and why there's a crackdown that's happening under our current president's placement. So in section one, it says that the purpose is for interior enforcement of our nation's immigration laws, critically important to the nation's security and public safety of the United States. Now, as a police officer, Clint, talk to us a little bit about how you see this playing out in real life on your day-to-day. It hasn't really changed a single thing for me. Uh, No, I want to go into how you see our nation's security being jeopardized by having illegal immigrants here. And more importantly, how this executive order is not targeting, you know, somebody selling corn from a cart on the corner of the street. The the order is in place to effectively allow the deportation of these criminals who are violating our laws in a more severe way. I mean, put yourself in the victim's shoes of your house was broken into and tons of your property was taken by someone who is an illegal immigrant. And I do understand that our own citizens do the same thing, but if you could completely avoid that situation by not having that person here in the first place, wouldn't you? 
For sure. And we can dive deeper into the types of crimes that are statistically being showcased as to the reason why we cannot allow them in our company, which are far more far more really vile than just somebody committing robbery. Yeah. And that ranges from, you know, murder to rape to vehicular manslaughter to it, the list goes on and on. And looking at that, most of the sweeps that are like going on right now, they're targeting more of these violent offenders and they're targeting the families, so to speak, because people have protested them separating the families as well. So you remove the parents and the kids are okay to stay, even though this person committed some heinous crime, but they don't want to separate the family. So they have to deport everyone. And I understand, you know, there are going to be people who didn't do anything wrong getting deported based off the point of they want to stay together as a family. And it's sad. It's sad that that's the reality and how separation of family is happening. But me, actually coming from a family of immigrants, my dad came over here from Canada illegally upwards of 45, 50 years ago, but immediately did it the right way. So I couldn't imagine having my family torn apart because my dad decided that when he got here, he was just going to, you know, not abide by the laws. And I mean, his plan was to just come here and then pave the path for doing it the right way and following the laws, which is exactly what he did. But for most of these families, I mean, name an excuse. It takes too long. They don't want to go through the process. They're worried that they're going to get deported sooner than later. I get that. But ultimately, that fault would have lied on my dad's shoulders and not the president's, not the state's, not the federal government. I, knowing what I know now, would have blamed that on my father. And that's an excellent point. It's people need to point the finger at somebody, but instead of pointing the finger at the person who actually committed the crime or is committing the unlawful acts. They're pointing it at the people who are taking it all away, not the person who instigated it in the first place. And that's where it just, it gets so muddy. And that's why we do have such a divide in our country right now. For sure. And Going on here to the second section of this executive order, it says on here to ensure the faithful execution of the immigration laws in the United States, including the INA against all removable aliens consistent with Article 2, Section 3 of the United States Constitution and Sections 3331 of Title 5 United States Code. So we can go on and we can read this and read this. But what it also talks about here is the enforcement of the immigration laws in the interior of the United States. In furtherance of the policy described in Section 2 of this order, I hereby direct agencies to employ all lawful means to ensure the faithful execution of the immigration laws in the United States against all removable aliens. So with that being said, how would you as an individual feel if someone, and I'll use the previous example, broke into your house, took everything, and then they say, well, we don't want to separate this person from their family. So we're not going to send them to jail. We're not going to hold them accountable for the law that they just broke. It starts to create this divide among Americans, in my opinion, because it starts to make me question, where do my own rights and laws stand if they're not equivalent to people that are in this country illegally? That's not fair. I'm not okay with that as an American. As an American who has supported my country from the moment that I knew how to. And that's exactly right. It's where is that line that draws, that's drawn in the sand to say either it's a violation of someone who's breaking the law's rights or a violation of someone who's not breaking the law and doing everything the right way's rights. Absolutely. And in just thinking on this further, I believe it's so important for us to, regardless of what side of this you sit on, there's no gray area. You're either for it or against it. 
I think that it's still important for us to understand the level of empathy that's required in order to move through this situation. And I don't want to say moved past it because I do not believe that this country should move past it. I think what the president has put forward has really shed some light on the vulnerability and the holes that are created along our border that make it so easy for the drug smugglers to come in, the rapists to come in, the human trafficking to happen. And somebody has finally taken a stance and said, okay, we need to have some security to where we define ourselves as American to a point to where we say we're American and you're not. And this is what makes our country different. Not having these free open borders to where There is no divide in our country. Our country has to be divided from other countries. Otherwise, it doesn't make us a country. And that's exactly right. We are a country of freedoms that we have to protect the citizens who are already here. And in having that level of empathy and understanding what these families are going through, these families of immigrants... I mean, if I had it my way, every immigrant that we are known known of, we should fully screen them all. And the ones that have any kind of criminal backgrounds or even might should be interviewed and sent back to where they came from and then have the opportunity to come back, but do it the right way. It's not like you're leaving and you can never come back. I don't think people understand that. They're not saying you're never allowed in the United States of America. They're saying you came here the wrong way. Please go back to the country that you came from. And we still have that door to freedom, but the door is locked and you have to wait until you're given the key to be granted permission. Just like us as Americans would need that same permission in order to access living in any other country in the world. And in our travels, we've seen this. And and this isn't just an American problem. This is a worldwide problem. Every country has immigration issues and every country has their own approaches. People look at us that we're such tyrants and how we're approaching this. But in our travels, we've seen how we're actually very liberal in how we do approach it. Where other countries, they just load them up in a truck and send them back over, Mm -hmm. whether it's in a war-torn country or not. There's zero tolerance. And I mean, we've been fortunate enough to travel to enough countries to where we've paid witness to that. And I think in in really moving forward, I want to point out how we started this conversation with the fact that turning on the news and being showcased information that isn't fully exclusive and it's not executing exactly what's going on behind the scenes I believe that's what's starting to create this hatred and us believing that we have to choose a side and us not really having the ability to showcase that empathy because the media is saying, okay, well, you people who believe in this and you people who support this or support your president, look at what you're doing. You're putting these people in cages. Well, I don't feel that way. I feel that the process, regardless of what it is, starts somewhere And unfortunately, this is just the reality of where this process is starting until more agencies get employed, more locations get created in order to disperse these people. And we took such massive action in such a short amount of time that this is what has created this influx of these immigrants being held in these facilities that can't maintain them all. And having these sweeps like this, I think, and I hope, is just the start of the process of being able to move things forward to where we're not keeping these human beings stuck in these cages the way that we are. And absolutely streaming, streamlining the process to obtain citizenship or work visas or the legal way of getting here to where it's not taking years and years and years to where someone can do it in a reasonable amount of time. Exactly. And if their families stay here, then if they choose, they come back here to their families in a reasonable amount of time. But it goes back to doing it the right way. And I think I wish the media would showcase the fact that we're not closing our doors on these people. We're just saying, please go back to go and start start the game the right way, because we want to make you safer, too. 
If you want to come here to our country, we want to make sure our Americans are safe, but we want to make sure you're safe too. And as you sit there, it's just my hope that you can find that level of empathy to understand that the way that this process is being carried out, anybody with any kind of humanity would understand that it's not okay. It's not okay the way that it's happening, but that there is a process and a reason as to why this is happening this way. And it's okay to have your own thoughts and opinions and beliefs, but to also showcase exactly what the reality is behind something such as our immigration reform. This is a brand new wave that the president is creating, and people really need to take a step back and educate themselves on the facts. I mean, the president asks you to fact track all of the time. And by doing that and having an understanding of what's really going on based on your own knowledge and not a freaking headline, (laughs) then you're really able to enjoy your tactical living.